Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing a Man Whitney U test in Microsoft Excel. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have in this Excel worksheet fictitious data, I have two variables, treatment and coping skills. Treatment has two levels, CBT and treatment as usual. And then coping skills is a continuous variable. And I have 20 records. So in this situation, often, we would be looking to see if there's a difference between the coping skill scores on the CBT level as compared to the treatment as usual level. So is there, is there a difference between these two levels as measured on this dependent variable coping skills? So for the situation, often we would use an independent samples t-test. However, in this example, let's assume that these data are not normally distributed for each level of this independent variable treatment. So we violated the assumption of normal distribution. So we can't use the independent samples t-test. So we're going to use a non-parametric alternative, the Mann-Whitney U-test. And we can determine if there is a difference between the ranks of each treatment by calculating the U statistic and comparing the U statistic to the critical value. So first I'm going to move to this rank column and calculate the ranks of the coping skills scores. And in Excel I'm going to use the rank.average function. So it's equal sign rank.avg and you can see it has two mandatory arguments and one optional argument here. So for number I'm going to select B2, the first value in coping skills. For reference I'm going to select all of the coping skills scores and then press F4 to make that an absolute reference instead of a instead of a relative reference. So I don't want this reference to change as I autofill down, which I'll do in a moment. Comma will move me to the next argument. This is optional order. It's an optional argument. And I'm going to select ascending, which is one. So now I have rank one for the score of 31. I'm just going to autofill this down. So this gives me all of the ranks for the coping skills values. And you can see because 42 appears for treatment as usual and for CBT, that appears twice, that it takes the average of the ranks here, 5.5. So that's why I use the rank.avg function. So now I want to calculate the sum of ranks for CBT and for treatment as usual. To calculate the sum of ranks for CBT, use the sum if function, equal sign sum if. The range will be A2 through A21. So all these levels of the independent variable treatment, CBT and treatment as usual. I'm going to use this same range to calculate the sum of ranks for treatment as usual. So I'm going to make this an absolute reference. F4 makes A2 through A21 an absolute reference. Comma, you have the next argument, that's criteria. So I want to sum all the ranks for just the CBT level at this point. So it'll be quotation mark, CBT, quotation mark. And then the sum range will be all the ranks. So that'll be C2 through C21. And again, I'm going to use this in the cell below. So I'm going to press F4 to make that an absolute reference as well. And you can see the sum of ranks for CBT is 88.5. So I'm going to use this same function in the cell below and the ranges are going to stay the same. You just have to use treatment as usual in place of CBT in this 
function. So we're going to move over to one of the treatment as usual levels in column A and just control C, copy that. So it'll be quicker to enter in this function. So autofill down and then move up to where it says CBT. Use control V to paste treatment as usual. So same function, just substituting in treatment as usual instead of CBT. And the sum of ranks for treatment as usual is 121.5. Now I need the count for CBT and treatment as usual. Now I know it's 10 because I entered the data in and counted them. However, I want to make this dynamic so that if I change the labels here, change the levels, CBT and treatment as usual, it'll change over here in count. So this will be equal sign count if the range again will be A, A2 through A21 and I'll press F4 to make that an absolute reference. Then for criteria, this will be quotation mark, CBT, quotation mark. And again, I'll autofill this down and highlight CBT, press control V, treatment as usual, I get 10 there as well. So the count for CBT is 10, the count for treatment as usual is 10. I have the sum of ranks for each. Now I can calculate the U statistic. Now I'm going to calculate the U statistic for CBT and for treatment as usual. And this will be the sum of ranks, so the equal sign, sum of ranks, F5, minus N times N plus 1 divided by 2. So this will be N, which is 10, cell G5, shift 8 for the asterisk, then G5 plus 1 divided by 2. So the U statistic for CBT is 33.5. If I autofill this down, it'll give me the U statistic for treatment as usual. That's 66.5. I'm going to take the lower of these two U statistics, which will be 33.5. Now I want to move to the Man Whitney U test critical value table. And I've reproduced part of that table here. This is the Man Whitney U test critical value table for an alpha of 0 0.05 or 5%. And we're looking for the intersection of the two sample sizes. So we could think of the row as one of the sample sizes and the column as the other. And it doesn't matter which one you use for which sample size. In this case, I know that the sample size for CBT was 10 and the sample size for treatment as usual is 10. And I can see here the intersection of n equals 10 for the row and n equals 10 for the column is a critical value of 23. So I move back here to the Man Whitney U tab. And for the critical value, I'm just going to enter this in, 23. So when evaluating the U statistic against the critical value, in the case of the Man Whitney U test, we reject the null hypothesis when the lower of the two U statistics, in this case 33.5, is less than the critical value. So 33.5 is greater than 23. So in this case, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. We would assume there is no difference between the CBT group and the treatment as usual group. So here, there is not a statistically significant difference between these two levels of the independent variable treatment as measured on this coping skills variable. I hope you found this video on performing a man with EU test in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.